Hello, we are Tim Jewel. Andrew is the producer on the team. Uh, Dale is the lead artist. Ronan is the programmer. And I'm Justin, the other programmer on the team. So our client this semester is uh, Elizabeth Forward Middle School. And these are our partners for this project. And so Team Drew is tasked with uh, creating an installation at the Energy Lab. The Energy Lab is an interactive space at Elizabeth Forward Middle School that teaches students about energy conservation. So currently at the Energy Lab, there are three installations uh, that talks about solar energy, wind energy, and fossil fuels. And so Team Drew is uh, designing an experience for the fourth and final capstone project that teaches students about energy conservation. And we'll introduce you to the Jurassic Power Innovation Center. So the Jurassic Power Innovation Center is an experience that teaches students about energy conservation at home, something that they can closely relate to. So the students take up the role as homeowners in a, in a new home, and they work together in teams of three over a period of uh, 20 years where they visit the Energy Lab seven times. So, to begin the experience in the game, each student is assigned a level in the house where they can uh, explore the house and click on different appliances or items where they can perform item changes or habit changes. So, when they make a change, they have to discuss a change with one another. And this is a great learning moment where they can talk to one another and uh, decide if a change is good or bad. And after about after five changes each turn, they will get all the money that they have, all the savings they made from these changes, and they'll get it at the end of the turn. And this is how they make money in the game. So when we designed this uh, experience, we really wanted to encourage habit changes. And this uh, habit changes is a primary part of uh, energy conservation. We wanted to get kids excited about uh, science and technology. And most importantly, we want to synthesize the other projects that I've mentioned earlier about uh, solar energy, wind energy, and fossil fuels. And last but not least, we want to make energy something quantifiable that students can relate to. And at the end of the experience, we hope that the students will be able to understand high consumption areas of uh, energy in their home understand the power of habit changes over uh, item upgrades, and weigh the benefits between short and long-term investments so that they will and use uh, trade-offs and understand trade-offs between uh, comfort, energy, and money. So I'd like to highlight that we are not a science museum game, and to tell you more about this, here's Andrew. Thanks, Justin. So indeed, we are not a science museum game, but what we are, in fact, is a multiplayer, multi-visit experience uh, and our main role is to provide interesting information for students to discuss uh, both amongst themselves and with teachers uh, to create these learning moments and important discussions. We've created an installation that uh, has a capacity of three students per game. Um, we have submitted designs for the final cabinet for the uh, television as well. Uh, as you can see, we have the touchscreens built now, but we are awaiting uh, delivery later this week of the final cabinet, and this is what it should look like. Just a couple of statistics about our experience. Currently, the first playthrough takes about 32 minutes, which means about four and a half minutes per turn. Um, so we hit our target of between three and five minutes uh, in order to hit our required capacity of 21 students per period. As you can see, we've got a theoretical capacity of 30, so we're uh, in the green for that. Um, this means that teachers will be able to pulse the students through at the same rate, at the same pace uh, in the curriculum, and that it should take seven visits for the first playthrough. The bedrock of our experience is the educational plan. Um, we have a document, and you're welcome to stop by on Friday to see this. It has both technical documentation and educational curriculum for the game. We have given the teachers all of the uh, in-game experience that the students will have, as well as potential pull-out activities and key facts that they can use in facilitating discussion in the classroom. This has been meticulously crafted to support the Pennsylvania core standards on sustainability education, as well as it has been integrated into the class curriculum. The first playthrough will be in a class mode that has curated events that we have created um, to share different learning moments that we're excited about and we think are important in facilitating discussion. So that will be the first playthrough, and in all subsequent playthroughs, there is a quick play mode where they can play through the entire experience at once. These events that we are talking about is the main differentiator between the class and quick play mode. One particular example is uh, focuses on one of the biggest energy consumers in the home, which is the heating system. Uh, students will gather together to discuss where they'd like to set the thermostat and discuss the cost versus comfort benefits. 
Another example is having to pick a new water heater upgrade. To talk about how students and teachers are actually using the experience, here's Dale. All right, thank you, Andrew. So in total, we've had 61 playtesters through nine unique uh, individual playtest sessions. Uh, this means we've had a lot of eyes from our key audience on our game, and we've gotten a lot of feedback from that key audience that we've tried to make our game uh, take in all of those considerations. Uh, for playtesting after halves, we took uh, three key things from our halves feedback. We wanted to make sure that things were no longer hard to compare in the game. We uh, upgraded our UI and we changed it so that things were more legible and understandable to every player. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the game was no longer overwhelming or confusing to a first time player that's approaching the kiosk and not understanding where to start. So we've added tutorials and guides to ease the player into that experience. Three, we also wanted to make sure that the three screens that we're using no longer uh, did not change the dynamic of the game and still provided conversation points for each of the players to have with one another. So on the softs, uh, we got feedback from you all and we took that and we wanted to make sure that we had it in our game. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our UI was no longer not uh, subtle. We wanted to make sure that popped and uh, made it very, very clear to the user that they were looking at a UI separate from the background of the game. We had general bug fixes. We had the educator uh, documentation that Andrew talked about earlier. And we wanted to make sure that fossil fuel units were no longer confusing to the player. So for the UI, you could see this was our UI after uh, halves. It was very dull, kind of all gray tones. And it was hard to see things like the upgrade button. So with some work with Carry On, uh, we upgraded to a new UI that popped uh, quite a bit more. And you can see the upgrade button now. Um, things just subtly like that allowed for less confusion with the player and more direct uh, playthrough. Uh, as to coming across with our energy uh, units, we also left the energy units on every item and every upgrade. But we also added a cost per year to both the base item and to upgrades. This allows players who don't understand or have not learned conversions between the three units used in the game to make quick and accurate com uh, comparisons to one item to their upgrades. Feedback was also a problem that we had whenever people were rejecting items for upgrades. We wanted to add both visual and audio feedback for both positive and negative uh, ideas that came across. So we added both visual and audio to those. For savings, we also wanted the player to come back and understand what they've done throughout the game, even though it might be their third or fourth time coming back to the game. So we've implemented a five, uh, five item uh, leaderboard that appears at the end of each round that shows every change that maybe you made the car upgrade first round and maybe you made the fan change in the fourth round. You're still understanding that one is better than the other. Uh, so playtesting after softs, what we watched for. We wanted to make sure that students were using fossil fuel data and how they were using it, or if they were just relying on uh, simple guessing. Do the learning events prompt discussion? We wanted to make sure that the learning events didn't just cut people off from one another and just made them focus on their own screen. And did the physical installation cause any impedance in conversation? So I'm going to hand it back off to Andrew, and we're going to take a step back. Thanks, Dale. So one of the primary pieces of feedback we got from the ETC faculty about what our experience needed to do was to create a, a platform, essentially, for discussion, to provide interesting information and interesting learning moments that the teachers and students could then take and do with what they wanted. So at this point, as designers, we are stepping back. We are letting the students and teachers use this. And here's what they had to say about the experience. Trying to see how much energy you can conserve while still trying to be happy. <laughs> you can't live for a lot of money, you have to be willing to spend it because it's not a 
So you can see that students all got things out of this game, and there, there's actually some asymmetry between what they thought the game was about, which we're really excited to see because that promotes interesting discussions when they're talking about trade-offs. Um, as you could see in some of the B-roll, uh, those events that we have in the game now do indeed prompt discussion, and the, they don't feel as if the installation is a barrier. As a matter of fact, they gather around kiosks and discuss these things as a team, which we're excited to see because those conversations are so important and critical to our game. Um, and as we saw at halves, the students do indeed still care about money and comfort, but now they're also able to discuss energy in more concrete terms, um, especially now that the teachers are bringing that into the discussion, which we're excited to see. As for the educational effectiveness of our game, we've done some pre and post testing about energy consumers in the household. As you can see, scores increased from an average of 70% to an average of 100% in the post test, which we are very happy about. Um, we also asked students about habit changes that they might make in their real lives, and we've seen those improve and diversify beyond obvious choices like turning off the lights or unplugging items. Um, we've also seen that they have a much more concrete understanding of their fossil fuels impact in reality. Now, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, we got some feedback from the ETC faculty wondering if the fossil fuels units were confusing or perhaps unnecessary to our experience. But when the teachers played through the game uh, last week, we actually saw that they used the fossil fuels data as a primary decision-making tool uh, when they were picking upgrades and habit changes in their home. And then when they facilitated the experience with students, they got the students talking about it. Um, and so we asked them if that was something they wanted in the game. And you can see the quote above, uh, it would be beneficial for me to cover. Essentially, they said they want that as a learning moment in the game um, and requested that we leave that in. As a matter of fact, they were so excited by all the data that we were giving them that they wanted a way to use it in the classroom. So we've implemented a feature in the game that allows them to export the database so that they can have conversations in the classroom with the students. We've also added the fossil fuels to the leaderboard so that they have a more diverse picture of uh, how the students are performing. To finish this off, here's Ronan. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, we got feedbacks from the faculty asking whether the students would like to play the game uh, during their free time uh, because they only have the chance to play it uh, only like once or twice in the class. And then here's the answer. That was fun. I wish yeah, I could play really, on my own house. <laughs> I, wish, I wish that game would be on the iPad so I could play it on my own house. Yeah. 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 Maybe like a little longer. <laughs> I wonder if yes. yeah. like maybe an hour or two hours And we're also glad to hear what the teachers think about the game. Uh, for what's to come next, uh, as we said before, the installation is finishing up this week and we are currently making a couple of tweaks to the boot up and shutdown process of the kiosk. Uh, we would like to thank all the people who helped us uh, improve the experience. Without uh, you, the experience won't be what it is today. And we are Team Drew, and we are open for questions. Jesse. You have a fairly complex set of tasks the players have to do. The interface is a little complex. Is there anything at this point that you feel is that where, where players tend to get confused? So the question was, is there anything in the interface that is confusing to the students? Is that right? Yeah, uh, so essentially I would say that the fossil fuels data at first, uh, as the faculty mentioned, is it's not necessarily something that's intuitive because you 
I have no idea, or at least I didn't before designing this, that, uh, you know, how much coal certain items take. But once we saw the teachers brought that into the conversation and made that an important point, um, that it became something that was clear. So there are a lot of things that may not be intuitive, but we really have to remember that the teachers are part of this experience um, and are there to help clarify things. Mike. So there's a lot of big ticket items in the basement. Whoever at the basement station gets to do a lot of things. Can you talk about why you didn't want every station to see every floor? Uh, so we want them to like have a different floor because we want them to talk to one another so they can like make decisions and we intentionally left like uh, not intentionally left the big items on the basement but like having the big items in the basement will allow them to like convince like the other players that oh this is a better upgrade than the other uh, items in the house and there are also uh, important upgrades in the other levels as well so we think that uh, having uh, multiple levels and having them restricted to uh, each level will allow them to really uh, talk to one another and help uh, improve like the conversations between them Going twice. Right. Dave. Uh, so to be installed, I'm curious what your expectation on maintenance and what the upkeep of this is. So uh, the question was, what do we think about the maintenance and upkeep of this? Um, well, so we've, we've implemented some back-end features that the uh, teachers can use to manipulate a couple things. First of all, they're able to reset the cost of energies in the game um, so that they can keep the game relevant for the foreseeable future. Um, we've also let them, given functions, to both export the database and to reset the game um, so that they don't have to actually go into the files to do that. So as far as the teachers, we've tried to streamline that as much as we can. Um, as far as other maintenance that's required, um, I mean, the game is pretty stable. We haven't really had any trouble there, so um, there shouldn't need to be too much technical maintenance, hopefully. Um, and all the cabinetry should be done by the end of this week, so that should be done, too. Jessica? Uh, so one of your measures of success was that students were um, coming up with more diverse and um, meaningful metrics of things they could do at home that weren't just turn off the lights. I was wondering if you could just share some of your favorite examples with us of things that kids said. <clears throat> sure, so the question was, what are some of our favorite habit changes that have been provoked by the game? I'm trying to remember from our last play test. One of the, I mean, one of the biggest ones was the, um, biking more often. Um, that's one of the biggest big ticket items in our game because the car consumes so much energy. Um, and as a matter of fact, like when students step into the game, they don't really think of a car being part of their energy footprint, which is an important learning moment for us. Um, what are some other things? Like a space heater, yeah. Space heater is a really big one. Like turning that off while you're not in there, in the room. Um, we've also seen them pick certain habit changes that don't save them energy, that make them happier, like uh, like wearing a light jacket at home or something. Like that allows you to decrease the thermostat, but it doesn't save you energy in and of itself. Um, but yeah, that's one of their favorites. As is like the the fabric softener in the uh, dryer. That doesn't save you any energy, but it makes you happier. So sometimes they pick that. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 fun to see how they come up with these decisions. All right, thanks, team. Thank you.